in such an effort to get here today. It's, it really is special, and you're all really brilliant for, uh, for what you've been doing. And uh, you really are. The majority of the, the population does not have a clue of what's happening. So I'm uh, privileged to be before you today. You can thank you so much for coming. And I'd also, first of all, like to ask um, all the, the government agents that's here today to stand up so we can all applaud you. The funny thing was, we had a small uh, march down a, a road along here with, um, with Mickey Summers. And all of a sudden, in the, in the floor, appeared a radio. And we're all looking around to see whose radio this was. And it turns out to be a police officer's radio. So good citizens, we took it back to the police station, but they closed the police station, so we couldn't, but they got it back. <laughs> so they're always amongst us, always. Um, and just Memorial to mention... Memorial Day that was. Sorry? Memorial Day that was. That's that, brilliant. That's right, yeah. yeah, yeah. So Justin kept on talking about Wake Up, and he, he jumped ahead of me here. Uh, so I'll, I'll just play this while I get, get sorted. banking sector, criminal courts, for many years. And I've proved beyond a shadow of a doubt the criminality emanating out of both these institutions. I've also proved that there is no justice to be had in the civil courts. And I've proved that to the detriment of my family and myself. We jumped through all their hoops, we played their silly game, and basically we have discovered that there is no justice, not just me, many other people have done exactly the same. Let anyone who's listening to this be warned. If you enter those civil courts, you do so at your own risk. Because when you walk out, you'll be a lot lighter than when you walk in. And they're not courts. They are nothing more than uh, commercial hearings. It's only commercial entities that should be in there, companies. And it's for them to sort out any differences. So. It's a wrong jurisdiction if you're in a civil court. It has to be a common law court. But as we know, the common law has been taken away from us. Um, I'll put some slides together just to... Um, oh, Teresa, she seems a bit perturbed. Oh. There she is. She seems a bit perturbed when she found out that charters are coming back. So. Uh, we just like to send her a message that uh, we are back and this time we're not going away. Now, uh, I'll put this up um, to, does, it, does everybody understand the creation of money and how the banks work? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Most people, put your hands up if you do. So, then I'll miss it out there. It's an excellent uh, little video. So basically, we've got our common law. What is common law? And it's so, so simple. Uh, the majority of people go into all the different rules and regulations, well, there's just regulations. But this is a first start. You've got 12 good men and women, and they all take an oath to uh, to be honest in their judgment. And they actually are the judges, not the man who's sitting up in the, in, in, on the bench. And by the way, when you go into a civil court, 
he's not the judge, he's an administration he, he, uh, hearing. He, uh, nothing more than a referee. A criminal would be better than for him. Um, this is what you get also. You get a judge who's on his oath and he will follow the common law. And generally they're dressed like this. It, it's archaic, it's, it's ridiculous, but that's what they are. When you uh, enter civil law, I get judges like this, by the way. This is my type of judge I get. <laughs> Seriously, a bunch of clowns. I, I know the law, civil law, better than the majority of these, and when I correct them, they throw their dummies out. I had one judge, just along here, said, Mr. Crawford, I do not care about the law. It's my opinion that counts. And that, <laughs> and soon my wife, she was there and witnessed that. So, what you don't get in, uh, in civil, civil uh, courtroom, I'm calling it a courtroom, that's what you see. You never see a jury. That's always empty if you get into a, a, a reasonable size uh, court. Otherwise, it's just you, the other side, and uh, the district judge. You don't get a proper judge. This is the, the, the type of judge you get. In this morning clothes, they're, they're also a death cult. Okay, that's why they ask everybody to rise, not stand up. They, uh, it's pretty, pretty disgusting. And uh, he doesn't care about the law. He's not on his oath. And he will steal whatever the other side has, has uh, that he's agreed with. I might need my glasses on for the next one. So, ah, I can see it. So your common law system, which had existed since the early 1600s, disappeared, why? because the people then operated the courts back in the 1950s to 1965, incorporated them into a part of a newly incorporated state and country franchise operations, and thereby converting our courts into a multi uh, court system. So, out goes common law, and in comes these courts, and they started off in 1960. Um, uh, I, in my original talk, I was going to start in, in the 50s and um, give you some information, I might still do. Um, now, this particular building is, um, is a courthouse. I've used this a few times in, in talks. It's, it's a lovely modern building. It, it's Miami, Miami Federal Courthouse. It's uh, common law. It should be because uh, America is a common law country, same as Australia, New Zealand, uh, South Africa, many others. But when you enter those doors, it's not what you think it is. This is a view from above of that courthouse. And there's your maritime law in your face. It's got uh, even a bridge and the grass has been cut like waves. And when you go down to the Royal Courts of Justice, the Strand, the Strand is actually, uh, the, the definition of it is the shore or the bank of a sea or river, they're telling you. And it is not a dragon that's outside, it's a griffin. And the griffin is used in many countries na and navies as uh, a mascot, but it's also a maritime. Now, these civil courts stole my house and Sue's house. And that's what it looked like for an alleged debt of 45. Now I'm going to use, to, it, it's no good to say these people are criminals without putting any proof. So I know my own case best and that's why I'm, I'm just going to put it up. Uh, I'll be as fast as I can to just give you the flavor of the criminality that these people now, it's a nice little bank loan, it, as I said in my very first, the first video, it is not worth a lot, but it meant a lot to us. This is what they did after they 
turned against us. They sent 250 police, three armed response, two helicopters, fire station on standby, 27 riot vans, two dog teams, ambulance, and stopped all the council. Why did they do that? It's because I've been attacking their system and we were becoming very successful. But there's another thing that, um, oh, by the way, when, when they finished with our, our house, uh, they left it like that. That's, um, that's justice. That really is justice. Or not. Now, the other reason why they behaved the way they did is because of all these good people. 850 turned up on the 23rd of Ju uh, January and stopped the bailouts. That put the fear into the system. It happened in Burtonhead and it happened here. And it should have carried on this, but unfortunately, agents and uh, the, the machinery got into work to undermine us. But that is what they fear. They, f they fear you. You've got the power, not the courts, not the police, not the government. You are the law. Now, just to, they, they smashed down our door, uh, took Sue out, I was going somewhere else at the time, and uh, damaged the property. They, 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 uh, they really went to town on the bank one. So, this is common law. Okay? Uh, violence for securing entry. This is the Criminal Law Act, 1977. Now, this is what the police constable should have been upholding. Uh, subject to the following provisions of this section, any person with, without lawful authority, and this is what they're being saying, without lawful authority, so we've got a warrant, okay? But if you jump down to section 2 at the bottom, subject to section 1A above, which I just read out, the fact that a person has any interest or right to possession of the occupation, of the, of the home, um, of any premises shall not, for the purposes of section one above, constitute lawful authority. So in other words, they never had lawful authority to, to smash down or, and uh, do the damage. And it's it's also um, I'll, I'll jump to the next one because it's a problem. It's immaterial whether the violence is towards the person or the property. So when they smash down the gates, the doors did all that damage, they were breaking the law. And um, it says here, a constable in uniform may arrest, and uh, sorry, number six, a constable in uniform may arrest without a warrant anyone who is or, or whom he, with reasonable cause, suspects to be guilty of an offence under this section. So all those police officers, these top dead, all these um, police officers, they did nothing. And in fact, they broke the law. But the reason why they broke the law is, 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 is states in that section uh, six, is because they're not police constables. These are all police officers. Hard, hard thugs. Criminals. If you, I was going to talk about it from, I did a lot of research and I pulled it all together for the Charters Movement. And I, I started off from 1950 to the present day and I halved it and I looked at society, how they applied the law, um, the, the, the judiciary up to the 50s, 60s, 70s and early 80s and then I looked at the rest to see the difference. Well, those officers in the 50s, 60s, 70s were armed with uh, a whistle, an notebook, uh, and a truncheon. And back then we had the IRA terrorism. And it was serious. People were getting assassinated, buildings were being blown up. Today, this lot here, they're armed like paramilitary. They have tasers, CS gas, um, they, they carry buttons, they're two foot long, some have got sidearms, some 
have semi-automatic weapons walk in the streets claiming that it's because of terrorism. The same terrorists existed back in the 60s, 70s and 80s. So this is to put the public in fear of these. And the, the, the one out here is probably the only one that felt ashamed. So the, there was one or two police officers who actually cried that day that you should have left the force. Now, um, that, that is my favourite one. That section 26 of the Criminal Justice Act, uh, a police constable listed in this section commits an offence if he or she exceeds the powers and privileges of a constable improperly. So you can get that, uh, to 14 years in jail for it. But there are police constables, so they're safe, the police officers. So you've got to bear in mind. And in fact, they're doing away with, uh, with constables, and even uh, uh, police officers are being phased out as well, and they're putting uh, council workers. Uh, you can't tell the difference between a parking attendant and a police officer now, and, and, the, police, and the, the population thinks, oh, there's plenty of officers around. They're not officers at all, it's just a, a facade. So, so that's what they did to sue a my home. Now, what, the reason why I'm, I'm, come, I'm explaining this to you is because of the fear and how they're scared of the population standing up to these people. It's six good people after this got on our roof. And, and the reason why they did it is they, want, they wanted justice. They're brilliant. And they went to trial in Leicester. They were found not guilty. And the judge in that case, my son kept on asking for the warrant, because I asked him, in fact, I said, originally, if they gave me the proper paperwork, there's a keys, take it. And he never did it. They asked for the same paperwork, and at the end of, uh, I think it was eight days, the judge, he asked the CPS to drop the case, basically. Not in so many words, but they said uh, they couldn't get a warrant, they couldn't get a judge here in Nottingham to verify it, and that was it. The case collapsed. But some silly old pugger thought, that sounds like a good idea, <laughs> and I got on the roof myself. I said I'd come down, if you arrest me, and charged me with burglary because I went in through the roof and got inside. And um, inside, I took something out that wasn't mine. I can't it wasn't mine, but the evidence is there. I asked them to charge me with burglary because I know if I was charged with burglary, I would have a jury. Now, this is the main point. Where civil doesn't have a jury, uh, criminal does. I got into the magistrate's court and uh, it started off and I said before we go any further to the CPS uh, and asked the usher, give that to the CPS and the judge said what's that? I said it's evidence of a burglary and uh, the CPS looked at it and uh, then it was adjourned to the, the next time before that, that was for directions. The next court case they handed it back to me, the CPS. They were not prepared to charge me with burglary. The highest evidence you can have in any court case is for someone to admit guilt. And uh, then it would have progressed to the Crown. It did go to a sort of Crown, but it went to uh, in front of Judge Cole. Now, I asked, I asked this woman for, the, there's eight documents there. Um, basically, a valid seal request, which is number three, for a warrant for vacant possession. A, um, a valid warrant obtained on the request of the number three above. A receipt for initiating the whole claim. I'm just going through the crimes that, that uh, you'll see in a moment. Um, and then the land registry fees. Uh, basically, very important, notice of issue, which means that the case must have been started and both sides have been notified that, that it's up and running. The judge said, 
yes, we'll get these documents and uh, order them to produce it within a f uh, 14 days, this is the CPS and the disorder. Six weeks later, after me pressurising them, uh, the judge got this, and I believe it was sent to me accidentally. It basically says, um, we write in respect of the bad matter. We received correspondence from, and that's a judge's clerk, I took her name out because I think she made a mistake, on the 26th of uh, January last year. And basically, to, to cut to the chase, it says, uh, the letter has itemed, um, the, the letter lists eight items requested by myself. I have written to the officer in, in the case with regards to items one to six. We have now received a reply, and that is to say, he has not had those items in his possession, nor is he able to obtain them. Can't get a warrant, can't get a notice of issue, can't get a fee, there is nothing that court along there can produce to do what they did to our home. They broke the law by not charging me with burglary. They broke the law by not um, uh, giving me a jury. The fear, because if I'd been in the court with a jury and I told them, can you imagine, your credit card, they never gave you anything. Your mortgage doesn't exist really. All the information and I'm pointing out the crimes that's going on. This is tiny. There's people that's lost millions that I speak to. In fact, it's someone that's lost three billion. It's not, it's the rich, well not the mega rich, but the rich, the poor, the middle incomes that has been hammered by these people. They're stealing whatever they can. And that is the main reason I brought this, uh, and I used our little case. So, this is our problem. Strategic partnerships. You've got the banks, the courts, the police, and the councils all working together. The police get, the police get into trouble, the courts cover them. The councillors break the law, the police won't arrest them, and they're covered by the courts. And the banks will come to them in a little while. And on top of that is the government. The strategic partnerships is huge. Now, for all those that like voting, this here is called the Hegelian dialect. It's an old German philosopher. He, he, he put it out about 1830, I think. And the theory goes that you bring two opposing sides together into conflict. And they get let's say Labour, Conservative, and they get the general population to pick their champion. The only trouble is the outcome has already been predetermined. The Marxists know about this, the capitalists know about it, and everyone in between. The whole system is rigged. I've seen direct evidence where they will take, let's say, uh, local elections. They will take a village with two, three hundred people, and they will give them five to seven councillors. A town of, let's say, two to three thousand, they will give three councillors. So the villages have more councillors, and when they're on the ballot sheets, they don't even list whether they are Labour, Conservative, Liberal, or make believe. They just don't do it until they get into power. So when they're in the council house, you all of a sudden realise, oh, it's all Labour, or it's all Conservative. It all depends on the Hegelian dialect, which ones have already selected. And those councillors are the next pecking order to become MPs. The system is totally rigged, and the same sort of system is going on in, uh, in national elections. Now, the Chartists originally wanted all um, all areas to have the same amount of people to vote constituencies. Now they're changing, they're moving the borders all over the place to 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 get a win for whoever they want. So it's totally fixed. All there is no there is no difference. Hegelian dialect is working very well for these. 
In fact, they're in love with each other. Look at them. I mean, Corbin, he, as Justin said, back to Bradbury, he, uh, he reneged on it. Uh, Theresa May, she backs anyone that uh, has a, a blue tie on. <laughs> oh, they both have blue ties on. So the, the system is totally rigged. Now, if you keep on voting uh, Labour and Conservative and think you're going to change anything, anything at all, uh, I think um, Einstein said if you keep on doing the same thing and getting the same results all the time and expecting something else, it's insanity. Well, I found this, this little this two-minute video and this absolutely betrays uh, Labour and Conservative, one of their voters, either or either. And this is what they expect when they're going to change something. So I hope I can play it for you. Ask Will if he's about, do you know how to play this here? It's, uh, it's the difference is conservative or liberal voter. Keep on doing the same thing, banging your head, hoping you're going to get a different result. You're just like that man. So, in the introduction to, the, to coming to the meeting, the meeting, I said I'm telling you who is doing this criminality to us all, why they're doing it, and how they're doing it. So, hello friends, oh, oh, him again. He hurts himself. Uh, why don't you make this video? Got it. Poor man. So, who's, who's doing this, right? The, the Hegelian dialect uh, is controlling everything. They're, they're controlling uh, local elections, national elections, any type of election that will affect the, the general population. Well, I didn't go through my full talk with you to, to show you exactly uh, the, the information that's really required. So I'm cutting to the chase because I realise it's getting near. So a lot of you are probably need something to eat just now. But this is who's. Uh, this is who's doing it to you. It's the city banks, the Rothschilds, uh, Rockefellers. Uh, that place I absolutely detest. That, in fact, they gave it a new name because of the crimes that come out of this place. It isn't city banks, it's blood banks. They have taken more lives than any standing army. That place there. Because they own every standing army. They've created more wars and funded both sides. They've starved people because of profit. They've got someone called a remembrancer. He sits on the right hand side of the Speaker of the House of Commons. And he's very insidious. This is a photograph of, uh, of one of them. He looks a plonker, really, but he's a dangerous man. He takes down all, everything that has been said in the House of Commons and reports back to the corporations, city banks. And it's worse than that. He is privy to every draft document going through the House of Commons prior to the MPs it doesn't really matter then. Or the public, because they are the masters. Labour, Conservative, Liberal, whoever. That city has put a trough out for them all. And they're putting all the money and power in there to, uh, to basically bribe and corrupt the MPs. And that's why they all come to an agreement. They are pulling, pulling, pulling all the strings. Now, here we have David Rockefeller. And it says, some even believe, we, the Rockefeller, uh, 
from a family, a part of a secret cabal, working against the best interests of the United States. This is from his memoirs, by the way. Um, characterizing my family as to be internationalists and of, uh, and of conspiring with others around the world to build a more integrated uh, global, political, and economic structure. One world, if you will, if that is the charge, I stand guilty, and I'm proud of it. That's out of his own mouth. This is also by the same criminal. It would be impossible for us to develop our plan for a world if we had been subjected to the light of publicity during those should be early years. But the world is now more sophisticated and prepared to march towards a world government, a supranational of an intellectual elite and world bankers is surely preferable to a, a, a national or auto a mixing of words here, uh, practiced in the past, so basically democracy. And you can't have that. They had their, their plan and have been fulfilling this for years. Hence the Hegelian dialect. The banks have done all this to the world. Every, nearly every problem we've got has been created by it. There's enough food in the world. There's enough of everything, but they steal it and they keep everyone short of what they need. Now, this man was assassinated. The drive of the Rockefellers and their allies is to create a world government combining super capitalism and communism under the same tent. All under their control. Do I mean a conspiracy? Yes, I do. I am convinced there is such a plot, international in scope, generational old in planning, and incredibly evil in intent. This is Congressman Larry P. McDonald. He was shot out of the air with another 150 passengers by the Soviets, as he said. Both sides, capitalist and communist. As I said, the Hungarian dialect at work assassinating their enemies. They have a long memory. They will not let things go. But I hate to tell them, so does my God, and it's coming to them too. <laughs> so, the science side, the minority, the, the ruling class at present, as the schools and press, usually the church as well, under its thumb. This enables it to organize and sway the emotions of the masses and make it the, make its tools of them. And that's precisely what they're doing. The press have been uh, lying about Sue and myself deliberately. Uh, and that has been national as well as local. In fact, the local uh, uh, rag here is not even worth a rag. It's so corrupt. But the, the, the national press, we haven't had one since probably 1950 where I was going to start my talk. RT told the truth. <laughs> so, I told you who was doing it. They were doing it for profit. The, 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 the city of London has controlled everything. So why are they, why are they doing this? And it's, it's so simple, I've already touched on it. They're doing it for this. So, it's for the people. They have all the power, they have all the money, so why, why carry on doing this? Because of those dynasties of the Rockefellers and uh, all, those, all those families. If you do not go play their game, the Hegelian dialect is gone. They will simply carry on, do what they want, as long as you keep on voting that system. That system is keeping the city of London in power. And by the way, have you ever thought why um, bankers never got arrested because of all the, the, the money they lost, billions? It's because in the city of London, those who don't know, is 
a state within a state. It's got its own jurisdiction. So all those bankers are protected. They're, they're diplomats. So you can't arrest a diplomat. And not only, here's the other thing, right? If the Hegelian dialect isn't true, why is it that these, these bankers got millions of pounds of, um, of bonuses? And uh, the press went, oh, the, instead of telling the truth what was happening, what did Labour and Conservative do when this money went missing or they lost it? They did what the masters did, told them to do. They got you, you to pay for it. How crazy are we? Uh, you may as well say the chip shop down the road is, is in a bit of financial trouble. You'll have to all help them out. It's, a, it's a, unbelievable. So as long as you keep on playing their game, this will continue, and this is why the Chartists are so important. We have to stop this. And, it, and if they were all Chartists, we'd be making, making great progress. So, I'm cutting it short. I'm sorry to take a bit, a bit of time. How are they doing it? There's, there's three tools, really. See, when I did my research, I realized that in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, debt was very low. Today, everyone's in debt. Guarantee, most people in, in this room today owe the bank something. Uh, in the early days as well, he didn't have uh, bailiffs banging on your door, uh, threatening letters that guarantee someone in your so social circles has received a uh, demanding letter from a bailiff's office, demanding money with menaces, is totally unlawful. It doesn't come under common law. That is one of the reasons that they uh, that they're managing it through the fear of debt, through the fear of losing your job. They use fear and they use debt and they use them. They're the, the gatekeepers of it all. These judges, they're upholding it. Now, that is what we should be aiming for. That's the Chartists. There's a few of them there. And once again, the, the government got really scared. I don't know if you know, but Nottingham was one of the, the hubs for Chartism in, uh, 19, in 1835, 36, they were about. No more than a mile up the road, there's, uh, there's a place called Mapley Hills. Does, there, does everybody know about Peterloo? The Battle of Peterloo? Manchester. Manchester, yeah. The, the dragoons charged them, same type of people, charged them on horseback with uh, their sabres drawn and cut down 50 and hundreds was injured. Well, something very similar happened just up the road here. And uh, the dragoons turned up, they got the special constables, I didn't know they had them back then, but the special constables. Uh, they arrested 250. Uh, they came from um, Bull, Nuttall, all these places around, around Norian. And they made crowds like this. And they got really scared. And one of the leaders, his name was Fergus O'Connor, and he was the very first MP, Chartist MP, he was the only one, but they started getting scared. So uh, I think Jack Frost was another one. He, uh, he was charged with treason and was sentenced to death, but they sent him to Chin, uh, not Chin, Chin is it, um, Australia. I can't remember the name of the island, it begins with a T. That's, that's the one. So, there's something, I'm, kind of, I'm finishing up in a moment. I want, I want everyone to think that they get these pound notes in their hands, the blood and suffering and misery that they have caused, and it all came from the city of London. This, really upsets me. 
This is uh, 1917. 14, 15, 16 young boys going off to war to fight. And the thing is, the Germans had exactly the same on the other side. And the Rothschilds was funding both sides. They were very brave for what they did, but they didn't, contrary to the government, fight for king and country. They fought for their mothers, for their fathers, for their sisters, for their community. They didn't give a damn about king and country, but they were told wrongly again, that the other side were going to invade and they'll the, the, the rape the daughters and murder. Total nonsense. It was done for profit. And I won't apologize for this, this, this particular one. Because as they went over the top, those 15 and 16 year olds ended up like this because of these Rothschilds. They were absolutely a disgusting entity to be on this planet. Yeah, yeah. So, what we need, we need to break the chains from it and join the Chartist movement. The Chartists is the only movement that's appeared for, I, I don't know, I really don't know how long. My talk was going to be more precise, but because of the weather, I, I altered it. I would be breaking it down easier bits for you. But basically, if we don't stop the city of London, there was a man, uh, Walt Tyler, during the, the poll tax. Um, uh, I think it was the, the Peasants' Revolt, they called it. And he, he got everything that he needed. The, 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 the government and the crown succumbed to him. And at the last moment, he did something really, really wrong. He asked the king, for permission. And the king said, yes. And while that was going on, the city of London, the mayor of the city of London, stabbed him in the back and murdered him in front of exactly all the nobles. Sorry? Exactly what's going on now. Exactly. They murdered him in front of all the nobles, in front of the king, in front of uh, a few of his supporters. The thing is, after that, the king said, slaves you are, and slaves you will remain. And that's exactly how they see us. We're just fodder. Fodder to send 15, 16 year old boys to the front to die, so that they can sell weapons, so that they can get the infrastructure to rebuild, to, to loan money to people. That's what they've done. So, if you don't take anything from my little talk, just take this. Take a tiny bit of courage that those 14 and 15 and 16 year olds had to go and fight for their families. Just take a little bit of it and fight to end the tyranny out of the city of London. And ask your friends, your neighbours, everyone you know to join the Chartists. But those people if we, if we don't do something very soon, this islands, and I mean, I mean Ireland, Scotland, England, Wales, everywhere is gone, and we have to do it. So, I'd like to thank you for listening to me, and uh, we'll go ahead and get something to eat now.